June. And the Central Pro-Am schedule called for the Pro-Am anglers to be fishing Bull Shoals. But right now, Bull Shoals is 30 feet high, and debris from the rest of the White River has flowed into the lake, making boating hazardous. As a result, Central Pro-Am has rescheduled the tournament for Table Rock, which is only 7 feet high. Join us as nearly 200 of Mid-America's best anglers return to Table Rock for the Table Rock 2 Pro-Am. Since Central Pro-Am was established in 1989, Pro-Am anglers have enjoyed the best of all worlds. A chance to fish a circuit that includes some of the most famous tournament lakes in America. Table Rock, Bull Shoals, Grand, and Lake of the Ozarks. And get to fish them every year. At least that's the plan. But this year, Mother Nature hasn't paid attention to the plan. And heavy spring rains have raised Bull Shoals to the point that most ramps are underwater and it's virtually impossible to hold a major tournament. As a result, the Pro-Am anglers are back for a second chance at Table Rock. And when the lake is as high as it is now, there's no shortage of ways to catch bass. Just ask Eric Holt, a former guide on Table Rock, who now is a full-time touring pro. I've been out fishing structure. It's early June, the fish are post-spawn, and normally on Table Rock, that means they're out on structure, they're all pulling out, but Right now, the lake is real high, so a lot of the fish are staying up in the bushes, and it's really scattered them out. Uh, there are some fish on structure. There's some fish in the bushes. I'm, I'm going to concentrate on structure. Realistically, I would say 28 to 30 pounds will probably win. If a, guy, if a guy gets on a real good deep crankbait bite, he could have a lot more than that, but uh, I don't think guys can catch more than that flipping, and I don't think guys can catch more than that just structure fishing with, with finesse stuff. Another angler who knows the lake well is Table Rock Guide and 1997 Pro-Am champion, Tim Sonata. I've had a great practice. Uh, of course, I've been fishing deep. I fish bushes a little bit, haven't been getting bit, but I'm fishing uh, anywhere from 30 to 40 foot deep off the main lake flats. Uh, catching quite a few fish, they're, hard, they're really hard to find. When you find them, they're really, really stacked up. And I've been catching them on a uh, half ounce white spoon and a uh, Jewel Bait Company uh, football jig, three quarter ounce. Uh, just covering a lot of water when I find them and I sit right on top and also the drop shots working real well. Uh, the fishing pressure has really been heavy this week. It's, it's hard to get on spots right now, but uh, when you find them, there are really a lot of fish there. And I think it's going to take a uh, neighborhood of 29, 30 pounds to win this tournament. The morning of day one couldn't be more beautiful. A gorgeous day to be on the lake. And with conditions like this, the Pro-Am anglers are eager to get out on the water. Stacy King has been one of America's best tournament bass fishermen for two decades, and he just keeps getting better. He's qualified for the Bassmasters Classic nine times, and earlier this year won the Louisiana Sitco Bass Tournament on Toledo Bend. So far today, it looks like his hot hand is continuing at Table Rock. King has located schools of smallmouth bass on flats in 25 to 35 feet of water. And he and amateur partner Steve Mitchell are catching them on white flutter spoons. And boy, are they catching them. Oh, there he is. I don't think it's very big. Well, I can't knock. Now he's pulling. They'd be a pretty good fish. Don't believe he's a keeper. Be close, but I don't think so. Because he's on the road so much of the time, King seldom gets to fish his home lake. But he knows what to expect from the Table Rock smallmouth. To make sure he has a firm grip on the rod, he wears a glove on his left hand. And even then, the smallies can give you a jolt when they hit the spoon. Some of the smallmouth that King and Mitchell are catching are too short to keep. But it doesn't take long until they're both well on their way to limits. Now, when it comes to catching deepwater bass, Tim Sonato is one of the best. Unlike Stacy King, who's casting his spoon out away from the boat, Sonato prefers to work a spoon vertically within the cone of his depth finder, so he can see the depth of the lure in relation to the depth of the bass. And even then, the bass will sometimes surprise you, and you have to be ready for anything. Sonato already had his limit before the Fishing Magazine camera crew showed up. But not amateur partner Ken Schulte. He's waited until the TV cameras are rolling to catch his fish, and he's making up for it now. Schulte almost won the amateur division title at Beaver Lake earlier this year, and then came close to winning in the first Pro-Am on Table Rock. 
If he can keep this up, you can be sure Primetime Ken will be in the running in this tournament as well. Like most of the other anglers entered in the tournament, Mike Webb and amateur partner Keith Sedbury are trying to catch bass in deep water. By mid-morning, Webb already has his limit, and he's hoping to land a big fish to anchor his catch. But so far, he hasn't been able to cull any of his smaller fish. Meanwhile, Sedbury is having good luck on a jig, and if they can both keep this up, they're putting themselves in position to be among the day one leaders. Years ago, Eric Holt was a full-time guide on Table Rock before making the decision to become a touring pro. As a result, he knows Table Rock as well as almost anyone. Today, he's fishing several spots up the James River, where he's always managed to catch bass at this time of year on deep diving crankbaits and finesse worms. So far this morning, everything is going Holt's way. He had a limit in less than an hour on his first spot, and he's continuing to catch bass everywhere he goes. The day is also going well for amateur Lance Beasley. Beasley is one of a trio of anglers who drive all the way from Omaha, Nebraska to fish in Central Pro-Am tournaments. And if he can keep this up, there's no doubt the long drive will have been worth it. When the Pro-Am anglers return to the Kimberling Inn for the day one weigh-in, Keith Sedbury takes the early amateur division lead with 6.2 pounds. A short time later, Tom Beckman comes to the scales. Now, were you fishing with Danny Barnes Danny today? Barnes. Those were your four bass then that he was talking about. 9.05 pounds. There's your leader right now in the amateur division. Tom Beckman, good job, Tom. When the second flight arrives, Justin Kaywood moves into the lead with 12.65 pounds. Moments later, Ken Schulte moves into contention with 11.6 pounds. Then, it's Billy Bird's turn. And we got four more to go. Four more that look just like it to go with it. Goodbye, lead. 16.35 pounds. A new leader in the amateur division, Billy Bird, ladies and gentlemen. In the pro division, Bobby Sullivan jumps into the early lead with 12.85 pounds. But he's soon overtaken by Mike Webb with 14.7 pounds. A short time later, Mike McClellan comes to the scales. Go ahead, now. What were you saying about these fish? You've just done a little bit of everything today? Yeah, I really have. I've spent the last two days up here and just covered a lot of water and looked at a lot of different stuff and been able to catch them doing a lot of things. Doing a lot of things has paid off. Current leader in the Pro Division, 14.70 pounds. Say goodbye to that. 17.30 pounds. Here's your leader right now in the Pro Division, Mr. Mike McClellan. When the third flight arrives, Stacy King comes in with a limit. But it weighs only 13.2 pounds, and he can't overtake McClellan. Tim Sonato also has a limit, and leapfrogs over King into third place with 13.6 pounds. Next is Eric Holt. Can you beat 17.30? We're about to find out. <laughs> One for Big Bass. 5.80 pounds. That's Big Bass right now. We're going to get a picture of that fish. You know, we... Uh, might not have to weigh five of these to beat 17 pounds. Might have been able to beat it with three of them. Here we go. Here we go. 22.75 pounds. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together from Cape Fair, Missouri, Mr. Eric Holt. At the end of the first day, Eric Holt sits atop the Lunker Lure Pro-Am scoreboard with 22.75 pounds. Mike McClellan is five and a half pounds back in second place, with Mike Webb, Terry Thomas, and Tim Sonato rounding out the top five. In the rest of the top ten, Buster Loving leads the way in sixth place with 13.5 pounds, but he has only a narrow lead over Stacy King, Butch Still, Danny Barnes, and Brian Herndon and Mark Tucker, who were tied for ten. In the amateur division, Billy Bird is in first place with 16.1 pounds. Justin Kaywood is in second with 12.65, followed by Ken Schulte, Tom Mason, and James Borler. In the rest of the top ten, McLean Yaks holds down sixth place with 9.75 pounds, followed by Sutton Berry, Tom Beckman, Jeff Martin, Steve Mitchell, and Ed Shea. Stay tuned for exciting day two action. We'll be right back. Helpful hints from some of Central Pro-Am's top competitors. In 1999, Roger Dial won at Table Rock with an all-time Pro-Am record of nearly 48 pounds. He did it by doing his homework and practice and then fishing the tournament his way.
after I found out that the lake was down, um, I went looking for the deeper willow bushes. I was catching all my fish out of willow bushes, and there were a few, mostly on the flats, that seemed to be in just a little deeper water. And those were the ones that I set out in the, in the pre-practice, is, is kind of running the lake and looking for those bushes that seemed to have a little more water on them. And I think that was a big key, was, was uh, just looking for the uh, willow bushes that seemed to sit out in a little deeper water. Uh, and, uh, you know, offered a little more shade and a little more depth than just, just all the rest of them. And uh, you, you had to make a silent presentation to, to be able to catch the fish. Plus, you had to be able to get your bait far enough up in the cover where they didn't have to come out and chase it because they weren't chasing any lures. You just had to drop in front of their face and they'd bite it. On the morning of day two, the Pro-Am anglers are greeted by overcast skies and the possibility of rain most of the day. For some of the Pro-Am anglers, the falling barometer and lower light level are a welcome change. But for first day leader Eric Holt and others who caught fish in bright sun on day one, the altered weather conditions create an element of uncertainty they would just as soon do without. When Eric Holt arrives at the spot in the James River where he caught his day one limit, he finds anglers from another tournament already camped right on top of the spot. Gamely, Holt begins fishing 100 yards away, but he's far from confident. He knows the bass he caught on day one were on that spot for a reason. And if he can't be on that exact spot, he might as well be miles away. Eventually, Holt begins to get a few strikes, but the bass that are biting are all too short to keep. Meanwhile, farther up the James River, things are going better for Mike McClellan. When he pulled up at his first spot this morning, he immediately caught four keepers. So although he doesn't know it, his four fish have moved him in front of Eric Holt, who's yet to land a keeper. But after that early flurry of activity, the action is slowed down for McClellan, and he can tell by looking at his depth finder that the bass are not at the same depths he found them on day one. Farther down the lake in clear water, Buster Loving is making his move. Loving won the Beaver Pro-Am earlier in the year, and today he's making a run at winning this tournament as well. So far today, Loving and amateur partner Scott Dennis are catching plenty of fish. The problem is that almost all of them are small Kentuckys. But with the James River bite slowing down for Holt, McClelland, and others, a second limit anchored by a couple of big smallmouth could be enough to put Loving in the winner's circle for the second time this year. By mid-morning, Eric Holt's situation has not improved. He's tried several locations where he'd located bass, but he's had no success at any of them. With the crankbait bite suffering, Holt is also trying a finesse worm, but it doesn't get results either. I'm grafting a lot of fish suspended today. No, they were really, really relating to the bottom well yesterday. I mean, not on the bottom, but they were within three feet of the bottom, made them real easy to catch. But today, a lot of them are almost exactly 10 feet off the bottom. Holt began the day smiling, but now he has his game face on, and he's beginning to get a little worried. I'd say it's a good thing I got on some stuff down lake yesterday afternoon, because it looks like I'm going to need it. Now, if you've ever wondered how you can set the hook so solidly and the bass still gets loose, here's exhibit A for it happens to the best of them, too. Mike McClellan won the Pro-Am Championship in 1992 and once won two straight BASS Invitationals. So if it makes you feel better, even McClelland is having trouble keeping his bass hooked today, too. He's located bass stacked in a small cut in 15 feet of water, and he's getting strike after strike but he can't seem to get any of them in the boat. Yeah. Hold off. Ah, that's coming. Finally, McClellan comes through with his fifth keeper bass. It's not big, but it's big enough to keep, and it extends his edge over Holt. Meanwhile, the same type of frustration is setting in for amateur Tom Teschner, who's fishing with pro Brian Herndon. Herndon won this year's first Pro-Am on Table Rock back in April, and he's in contention again today with a solid limit. Teschner, on the other hand, has yet to land a keeper, and he keeps losing fish on a jig. While Herndon sticks with a crankbait, Teschner is working a jig along the bottom, and he just keeps getting strikes. This time, he works the bass close to the boat, and Herndon can see it's a dandy. Then the fish surges and spits the jig leaving Teschner even more discouraged. 
A few minutes later, fate gives him one more chance, and this time he's determined not to let the bass get away. As Teschner works the fish back to the boat, Herndon can see that this one, too, is a beauty. Carefully, Teschner brings it in close for Herndon to grab it with the net. And regardless of how many you've lost before, it just doesn't get any better than this. When the Pro-Am anglers return to the Kimberling Inn for the final weigh-in, Scott Dennis comes in with a solid limit that weighs 11.25 pounds. But his two-day total of 14.8 pounds can overtake Billy Bird. Finally, day one leader Billy Bird comes to the scales. So you're going to need 4.60 pounds. How many fish you got? Another five fish. They're probably going to weigh over four pounds, aren't they? Boy, look at this. Oh, my. 14.65 pounds. Two-day total. 30.75 pounds. Billy Bird, ladies and gentlemen. Nice job, bud. In the pro division, Stacy King is one of the first to weigh in. Yesterday, 13.20 pounds. Better at it today, Stacy. 15.85 pounds. All right, Stacy. Two day total, 29.05 pounds. There's your leader right now in the pro division, Stacy King. A short time later, it's day one leader, Eric Holt. Eric had a limit yesterday that weighed 22.75 pounds. How many you got today? I got five barely today. It was a struggle. Yesterday I had 20 pounds early. I caught another 18 pound limit in the middle of the day. I caught another 12 pound limit late. I just caught fish everywhere I went all day long. Today I had my first fish about 220 or so and I mean I just hunkered down and hammered on them and got my fifth fish there, the biggest one, about <laughs> 10 minutes before I had to come in so I was pretty tickled. We're going to add to 22.75 pounds, 15.40 pounds. It's official now. Eric Holt wins his second Central Pro-Am title with a two-day total of 38.1 pounds. Eight pounds back on the Lunker Lure Pro-Am scoreboard is Mike McClellan, followed by Stacy King, Jackie Davis, and Terry Thomas. In the rest of the top 10, Buster Loving finishes in sixth place with 26.6 pounds, edging out Randy Stovall, Shane Voiles, Butch Still, and Mark Tucker by less than a pound. In the amateur division, Billy Bird earns his first Pro-Am title with a two-day total of 30.75 pounds, outdistancing runner-up Tom Beckman by more than 10 pounds. Jeff Martin comes in third with 20.2 pounds, followed by Dick Hinman and Mike Smith. In the rest of the top 10, Sutton Berry leads the way in sixth place with 16.75 pounds, with Alfred Chapman, Scott Haldeman, James Borer, and David Calhoun all close behind. Stay tuned for tournament winning tips from Eric Holt. We'll be right back. From the top, techniques you can use to catch more fish. Brought to you by Ranger Boats, where they still build them one at a time. Most of the time I spent throwing a Norman DD-22. I was throwing it in the chartreuse and blue in the stained water. And then when I came down to the clearer water, I was throwing a, uh, a shad-colored one. Basically, the only thing I was doing different, I may have been cranking it a little bit faster than the other guys. I, I was trying to get a reaction bite. The, the fish didn't seem like they were really wanting to eat it. But if you got it on them real fast, they had to make a split-second decision, and by then it was too late. The main thing I think you can concentrate on, actually, there's two main things, the color and the speed of retrieve. If you have a fish and he's barely hooked in the, in the just by the back hook, you're toward the right color, but you haven't got the right color yet, just start varying it a little bit at a time. If you're, if you're barely hooking them and you're throwing a chartreuse and blue back, just switch to a chartreuse and a, and a brown back or a different color chartreuse. If you're not getting bit at all, switch to a shad color. Uh, switch back and forth your colors. And as far as retrieve goes, sometimes they want that thing just barely crawled on the bottom. Sometimes, like this weekend, they want it cranked really fast. Sometimes erratic, sometimes steady. So just keep burying it up. Once you get on it, you'll know it pretty quick. What you want is the fish to have the front and the rear treble hook in their mouth. And if you're hooking some fish that's hooked in the side of the cheek or just barely hooked with the back hook, they're reacting to it, but at the last second, they're just turning away from it or, or not really committing to it. If you've got the perfect color and the perfect speed of retrieve going on, they come up, I mean, they swallow it. They'll, they'll have both hooks down in their mouth. 
The Fish and Magazine television series is brought to you by Ranger Books, where they still build them one at a time so you can fish hard.